So I have big plans for an epic scale Kerbal Space Program video today. But uh, as you might have known if you watched my Space This Week series, I've been a bit ill, I've had the flu, and this week I've been recovering, but I wasn't quite fully there. So for most of this week, during the time that I would normally be spending working on Kerbal Space Program content, I was kind of just lying in bed feeling depressed. So I didn't really have that much time to make a Kerbal Space Program video this week. But, you know, during that period where I just didn't have the energy to do anything and I was just sitting in bed looking at my phone, I decided to kind of go through my saved Reddit posts because I've got so many at this point. Every time I see something interesting that pops up my feed, like I don't want to talk about in a video or something, that I'll just quickly save. And it's just ballooned into this absolute monstrosity. It's like over a thousand posts. It's ridiculous. So I thought I'd just go through and just prune all the ones I didn't want to talk about. And I found quite a few sort of saved Kerbal posts of craft I thought were interesting that were created by other players of this game. And one of those crafts was a 100% stock Boeing 2707-300, which was created by a Reddit user Mountain Captain 396 Submitted it about three months ago, as of the time of me recording this, so March 2025. Uh, there's a picture on the screen. I really liked the aesthetic. I've always liked uh, kind of custom fuselage aircraft that are made in the stock KSP game. So, you know, it's achieved with fairings like I've done here. I decided to do a sort of soft recreation because I really just really liked how that aircraft looked. I couldn't really, I, I experimented doing the thicker wing style, so you use the uh, really small diameter liquid fuel tanks to form the wing edge, and you have like multiple layers of the wing pieces to make it look nice and thick and realistic. I just kind of suck at kind of making custom wings in Kerbal Space Program though, so I sort of abandoned that and just made this wing. So this is by no means a recreation of a Boeing 2707-300. It was more just inspired by, you know, Mountain Captain's recreation and, you know, it's just generally kind of a similar aesthetic. So that's what I'm doing in today's video. I like how, I'd like how it took me, you know, two minutes, ten seconds to completely summarize just what the video is about. But as you can see, construction is coming along very well. And one of the ways in which this is obviously different to Mountain Captain's craft, apart from the fact that it's it's objectively a very, very different craft, is we've got a lot more engines. Specifically, we have two nuclear engines, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, rapier engines. This is not just an aircraft, but it is also a spacecraft. It's an SSO. You can probably see the the craft title at the top to be fair and could figure this out that this is a single stage to orbit uh it's quite you know doesn't have that much delta v so it's going to be a simple old mission we're going to be going to minmus as was probably evidenced in the title and or thumbnail. i don't know really what i'm going to call the title of what i'm going to put as the title and thumbnail of this video so many youtubers i see are very confident they know exactly what the title and thumbnail are going to be, are going to be whilst they're editing to the point where they can show the title and or thumbnail in their video i'm like wow you guys are so Confident. I have. I'm. I just have a panic attack when it's time to make a title in the mail. I never know what I'm doing. I just make about 50 different versions and and yeah, just settle on something that I hope will work. And here we are taking off on the uh, Kerbal Space Center runway. That beautiful engine plume is, of course, part of the waterfall mod. It's got lots of environmental effects as well. I get a lot, a lot, a lot and lot of comments and questions asking what my mods are. Check the description. There's always a big mod list in the description of all the mods that I'm using in that given video. Oh, look at that little, including that little vapor wave, that shock cone you saw up here. That was a little sonic boom effect. That's in the description as well, so just check the description, guys, if you want to see what mods I'm using in a particular video. Uh, also, whilst you're looking at the description, if you're enjoying this video, then, of course, leaving a little like down below is always very much appreciated. And, hey, if you're not subscribed, why why not subscribe? Hey, I try and make a Kerbal Space Program video every Saturday. It's not always possible because of life and logistics and the fact that YouTube isn't actually my full-time job. Um, and also, I've got I make Space News videos on Mondays as well. So there you go. There's a compelling, well-scripted summary of what my channel is and, you know, subscribing and all that. Anyway, as you can see, we are ascending to space. The rapiers have switched to closed cycle mode. We've also activated the nuclear engines as well. And in just a second, we're going to throttle down those rapiers. There we are. I've left just a fractional amount of oxidizer uh, left in the tanks. Just to help us kick off the surface of Minmus. As you can see from the way our speed is not really climbing that 
fast, especially considering this video is the footage is sped up. Uh, we have terrible thrust weight ratio, so we it's fine for landing on Minmus, but taking off, we kind of needed a bit of an extra kick to get clear of the surface. So we'll use a very quick burn from the closed cycle rapiers to uh, you know leave the surface of Minmus. You want to try and keep your usage of the closed cycle mode of the rapiers to an absolute minimum because it's a very, very inefficient engine uh, in its closed cycle mode. In everything mode, it is also still the most inefficient everything engine, but compared to a chemical rocket engine, very, very efficient. So there we are. So uh, Minmus is in a perfect place, actually, to make a maneuver that gets you to Minmus. You kind of want to make one kind of 90 degrees behind it, if that makes sense, and then pull on prograde, and there you go. And that was, we were in pretty much the perfect position to do a burn immediately. Now, I'm not just doing a straight shot single burn to get to Minmus because of our aforementioned terrible thrust weight ratio. I'm doing two burns. I think I did two burns. Was it three burns? I'm pretty sure it was two burns. <laughs> um, two burns to get ourselves to Minmus. So we'll do kind of half the burn in one go, and then we'll time warp around the planet and do the other half. Just that we're making the most of the Oberth effect, so prograde burns are at their most efficient the closer you are to periapsis, because the faster you are going, the kind of it's, it's kind of a really counterintuitive thing to think about, but it's, trust me guys, it's true. <laughs> you can Google it. Um, burning as close to periapsis as possible is more efficient, so that's why, that's why I'm doing that's what I'm doing there, because although we've got enough delta V, it's, the numbers were kind of tight during our test flight, so I, I didn't record this, but I did a test flight of this mission to make sure this thing can indeed get to Minmus, and uh, the, the, the numbers were tight, but I realized it had far too much, too much oxidizer on board, so I then drained like 2,000 units of oxidizer for this repeat of the mission, so I actually had a lot more delta V for this second go, but hey, just to, you know, it's good practice, try and keep things as efficient as possible. As you can see, we are now on trajectory to Minmus, but I'm doing, I'm going to have to do a mid-course correction burn because I kind of want to be circularizing in an equatorial orbit to make selection of our landing zone easier, as is kind of standard for Minmus SSTOs, at least for me and I think for most people. Uh, we want to be aiming for one of its great flats because, you know, easy to land on with an aircraft, right? There's no big rocks or changes in the terrain that would might make takeoff and or landing tricky. So that's what we're going to be doing. But yeah, like I say, I hope my, uh, my voice isn't too grating. I feel like I, I could do space this week because those videos are basically 100% scripted, so I could just sit there and drink lots and lots of water and warm drinks to loosen up my old vocal cords. I just sit there and just suffer through the 15 minutes or so it takes to record, and then I can just mindlessly edit the video for like, you know, six hours or whatever. Um, but these Kerbal Space Program videos, they tend to be a bit longer, and obviously they're not as scripted in that they don't have scripts, so I'm kind of having to use more brain power whilst talking to kind of come up with kind of compelling audio commentary on the fly. And is that a pun? I don't know, not putting that much brain power into it, apparently. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's a different kind of vibe, these Kerbal Space Program videos. Like, I feel like my commentary style for these videos is a lot more conversational slash casual, and it's just harder to maintain that tone and cadence when you're feeling a bit rubbish. So that's why I couldn't make a Kerbal Space Program video last week for that reason. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I hope my, my voice has recovered. Um, yeah, I, I went mountain biking uh, yesterday. So that was kind of like, well, I'm better now. It's an electric mountain bike, so not too, kind of, too much exertion. But, you know, that's the, uh, that's the thing. Uh, one of my hobbies, if you follow me on Instagram, yeah, there's a little plug for my Instagram, by the way. I post maybe once every three months or so. And usually my posts are either A, my cats, B, I don't know, something stupid like Lego or Rubik's Cubes. And then the other, the other third will be bikes, basically. And my second channel has sort of basically become a cycling channel at this point. And yeah, I got myself an Orbeo Rise last year as an e-bike. And oh my gosh, I am totally sold on electric mountain bikes. Maybe not. I don't really get like electric road bikes because like, what's the point? Like, road cycling is like just, you know, you, I, just, I see road cycling as like a fitness thing. Whereas mountain biking, it's all about the descent. The climbing sucks. And you just want to get it over and done with as quickly as possible. So then you can just descend down the trail. And e-mountain bikes are phenomenal, are phenomenal for that. I know there's a school of thought that says, you know, you've got to earn the descent. But I disagree. So there we are. And speaking of descents, I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was aiming to land on one of the flats. And I sort of overshot a little bit. And we landed on this slope. So now I'm just sort of 
coasting down the hill. Uh, not like I had a choice, the brakes are on and this SSTO is not stopping at all. Using those Vern engines there just to raise the nose so we don't sort of do a nose scrape as we uh, enter the, the flat region. And uh, yeah, there we are on, on the Minmus flat. So we're gonna, I'm just coasting a little bit away from the uh, slope there. Just we've got a nice sort of more open area for kind of potential thumbnail shots, things like that. Take some nice photo opportunities with our four Kerbals on the surface. Yes, I am kind of underutilizing this SSTO's capacity just because getting, SS, getting Kerbals on EVA is a bit of a faff. As you can see, there are no crew hatches here. So I've had to use the uh, inflatable airlock. You can kind of see it on the back of the kind of upper bit of the cabin. There's me inflating it there. We're going to use that to uh, EVA Kerbals across. Uh, I did try, uh, so kind of again, the upper fuselage bit. I tried putting like a lander can capsule in there with the door facing up and then have Kerbals transfer into that and then EVA, but it would always say EVA unavailable hatch obstructed. Even when the hatch was like very much not obstructed whatsoever. I don't know if that's because part of the cockpit is clipped into a fairing and the fairing is telling the whole craft, the whole part is inside the fairing and therefore the hatch is not possibly, is not accessible. I'm not quite sure what was happening there because I've never really had problems with that before. But I'm just saying that's why I opted to use the inflatable airlock on this occasion. And there is Jebediah, Valentina, Bill and Bolt on EVA. We've got to do our obligatory flag plant. And uh, yeah, there they are on the surface having just just the best time, just the best time ever. And then we could just go ahead and uh, put them back on. I'm not going to show you the in, the entire boarding process because it was a little bit tedious. Uh, I mean, what is, I don't actually know what the capacity of this craft is. We've got, it's going to be a good bit of commentary, isn't it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, times two, because there's two seats per cabin, so 18, and then times two, so 19, 20, 36. Uh, 37. We've got capac crew capacity of 37 Kerbals. I guess technically 38 if we count the uh, inflatable airlock. We just have that extended the whole time. But I think for realism's sake, it's uh, it, that, that, that wouldn't that doesn't count, does it? So here we are retracting our landing gear as we uh, I guess ascend away from the uh, surface of Mimus. It doesn't look so gorgeous. That's part of parallax. Uh, oh, what's it called? It's not Parallax 2.0, it's uh, Parallax. Parallax Continued. That's the one. Video description again has all the mod names. Uh, yes, Parallax Continued is the latest version of the Parallax mod. That's one of the best visual mods out there, to be honest. Uh, right up there with Volumetric Clouds and Scatterer. Mm, I love it. So, as you can see, we've got about a kilometre per second of Delta V remaining, which is going to be more than enough to get back to the Kerbal Space End because we can do most of the deceleration at Kerbin, you know, in with Kerbin's atmosphere, right? We're going to be doing lots of aero brakes to lower our apoapsis and, you know, get back to the Kerbal Space Center's runway, which is one thing I try and aim for. Yeah, look at that. 165 metres per second burn. Absolutely nothing uh, compared to our overall Delta V budget. But yeah, so I, I talked about I, I went mountain biking. What else have I been up to recently? Because I haven't really had the energy to like edit videos and do commentary and stuff, I haven't really been playing KSP, obviously. But I did play Planet Crafters DLC. I'm a huge, huge Planet Crafter fan. It's so addictive. I love it. Uh, if you haven't played Planet Crafter, massive, massive, massive recommendation from me. And uh, they released a DLC towards the end of last year, and it was kind of met with mixed reviews. So I was like, mm, maybe they'll just patch it and it'll be better. And Lo and behold, they have patched it and made it better, and there was a couple of other kind of quality of life updates made to the game, so I downloaded the DLC and played it, and oh, it's so good. I love it. It's not quite as good as the original planet, but I feel like it's going to be next to impossible to capture lightning in a bottle twice. Uh, it's a smaller in scale kind of planet, but it's all kind of much more concentrated, and there are lots of kind of changes with the DLC world that make it, in my opinion, kind of better than the original world, like a lot of things like there's a, there's a new thing called an ore crusher and it replaces the kind of use of the ore extractor in the early mid game. Um, so it's kind of, it's got its pros and cons. If you want to play Planet Crafter, start with the main planet, Planet Prime, and then do the DLC planet, Planet Humble afterwards. Maybe wait a little bit so you kind of forget some of the things about the game like I did, I don't know. And uh, yeah, a fun old time to be had. I also bought uh, Cyberpunk in the Steam sale as well. Haven't played it yet. That I'm very much looking forward to, and I did get it with the uh, the the, the, D the the DLC thing, Phantom, Phantom Man, Phantom Sit, what's it, Phantom, Phantom Liberty, I think maybe. I bought it with that. Everyone says to get it with that, so that's what I've done. And uh, 
Yeah, oh yeah, I bought Switch Sports as well. Um, I'm a huge fan of Wii Sports. I kind of wanted to play Wii Sports Golf. So I had a look at kind of used Wii U prices because it's kind of one of those games you can't really emulate, can you? I guess you can, but not easily. Uh, so I thought I'll get Switch Sports. And I don't know, it feels vastly inferior to Wii Sports that came out in, what, 2006? <laughs> like, the Golf, I feel, is especially... Like, I could, is anyone, am I just shouting into a void here and no one actually plays this game that could relate to what I'm saying? I feel like putting in Switch Sports is an impossible task. I can do either maximum overshot power or no power at all, but anything b beyond that. The Joy-Cons just don't seem sensitive enough. Like, they're either... or It's either 100% or no percent, if that makes sense. Which is weird, because it wasn't like that on the Wii. It was very accurate on the Wii. And considering how crude the Wiimote's technology was compared to kind of modern technology, it kind of seems odd that that's the case. Like, I don't know if you guys know this. The way the Wii Remote knew where it was in space was... If you kind of look at a Wii Remote, at the front part, there's that kind of black glass thing, like plastic over it. Behind that, there's an infrared camera, and it's looking for the sensor bar. Do you remember that? There was a little sensor bar you plugged into the Wii. The sensor bar doesn't actually sense anything. It just had two infrared points on it. And then the Wii Remote would look for those points, and then that's how it would know where it was in space. Fun fact, if you ever lose your Wii Remote sensor bar, you can basically... Take, I swear I'm not making this up because I tried this and it worked. You can take two candles and place them like by your TV, so kind of dangerous, uh, the same distance apart as kind of the length, well, the dis separate them by like the length of a Wii sensor bar distance, um, and then that, and it will work. Like the Wii Remote will see the candles and it you can use your Wii Remote. It's really funny and kind of really uh, interesting quirk of the Wii. But yeah, so that's what Wii Sports was using, and it seems to be way better than Switch Sports. Not to mention the variety of sports seem to be better. Like, Switch Sports has loads of just, like, tennis versions. So there's, like, volleyball, tennis, badminton, whereas there's no boxing or baseball. And I was like, oh, it just seems odd that, like, Nintendo is just charging full price for this game that's basically inferior in every way to Wii Sports. Especially Wii Sports Resort, which is, like, much, much better. Yeah, whatever. Kind of, uh, welcome back to this Kerbal Space Program channel. We have arrived back at the Kerbal Space Center. I guess I didn't really offer any insightful commentary just there. You might have seen, though, my front landing gear didn't deploy. And I was like, oh no, the mission is doomed, but I googled it. And I didn't realize there's a button that you can click on it that says deploy shielded. You toggle that, and then the landing gear will deploy even when the game thinks that they're uh, doing the air quotes thing stowed. So there you are. There's a little tip that I should have probably said at the time I was doing that in the video, but I guess I was just on some kind of weird little rant about the Wii and Switch Sports. But you know, hey, if you did enjoy that little rant about Switch Sports, and I guess the rest of this commentary, maybe you enjoyed the KSP game playing, I don't know. <laughs> but if you did enjoy it, and you want to support me like the wonderful people on the right hand side of the screen did, then you can sign up to my Patreon or my YouTube channel member program, it really helps me out, and it's only like a couple of quid a month, it's, it's, I try and keep it cheap, and uh, you, you can do that, and if you liked the video, then leave a like as well, always very much appreciated, but that is it, thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next 